Yeah, no, no, of course. Thank you so much for noticing that. Not many people have, actually. It's delightful for me. <laughs> um, Dave and Elena, I think, on the face of it, are completely different. They come from, you know, like literally different countries, and they have different experience that shape them. Um, but at core, they're the same. And that's really a lot of what I was trying to do, especially with the Hackney and Siberia scenes, was show the commonalities, like that sort of universality, that if you grow up poor, then you want things, and you... No, you probably might not get them, but you'll take a chance to try and get them. And that um, that can have repercussions for your adult life. Um, and really, like that's what... Because they seem, I think, on the face of it, um, an unlikely couple. But at core, they're the same. You know, they're decent, and they want to be decent, even though life has treated them badly. Um, and what the reader has to hope, I think, is that they can overcome all of the all of the obstacles and all the things that pull them apart because of that shared, that those sort of shared values and that shared, uh, that shared experience of wanting something and probably being denied it. Yeah, um, so I was, I was trying to think of a way to, um, to express that, that feeling of being in love and wanting it desperately, you know? <laughs> being, having it just in your reach, but not quite. Um, so it's the idea of um, constantly needing and wanting. And actually all of the characters in the book, even the, you know, even Fadir and Andri, who are, you know, terrible, <laughs> terrible people, really. Um, they all desperately want something. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, that, that sense of... Uh, of needing and wanting, um, and the colour of Jalo, um, you might have noticed, comes from Dave's description of her eyes, which is that she, you know, like when you're in love, you notice details that nobody else would, and things that are charming, and wouldn't be charming perhaps to other people, suddenly become fascinating to you. So. Completely, yeah, I just, I um, just contributed a, a chapter to a novel on writing writing novels for, for people learning or teachers and I, I wrote a whole chapter in details. <laughs> it's a massive part of my process and um, for me those little details are the things which I think you said they underpin the reality um, they take the reader there you know if you have the the, the um, tactile feeling of a tabletop or the taste of a sip of coffee on your tongue then all of a sudden the reader is conjured right there with you um, so, so I've always and also I think that's um, that's something that I'm interested in. Those minute, minute details, and trying to find the most interesting ones to portray what I'm trying to portray at any given time. Um, so in Hack for Hackney, that was it was relatively easy to find those details because I was living there and I'd been absorbing those details for years and years. Um, but when I knew I had to write the Siberia sections, I actually did go to Siberia. I I spent a month there from Moscow to Irkutsk. Um, and lots of my work was, um, ostensibly it was to go see the sorts of towns where women are trafficked from, to see where any might have come from. But lots of my work was like, looking at the colour of old women's sandals or, <laughs> you know, um, or, you know, like, uh, I don't know, going to the park and, you know, looking at the shape of the leaves or whatever. Um, so I spent a lot of work trying to, like, really focus in on those little details that would make Siberia come alive to a reader. For, for me, it anchors, it anchors some truth in the book. Mm -hmm.